Hello, I'm Remy, and this is my brother Emil. Hi. We're here to speak out on behalf of oppressed rats everywhere. Oh, rats who man. don't have the access to media oh, that our movie we're affords speaking us. Out. Yes, we have to. We rats need to take a stand. You said we'd sing something, you know, joke around. You did not say we were going to take a stand. This is important. Humans need to know. Humans need to feed us. That, that's what you need to do. Leave some garbage out and we won't bother you. Just leave the lid on top I of the can that. loose. All right, all right, moving on. Radis Radis, the black rat, arrived in the west first, hitching a ride with the returning crusaders. In Europe, finding plenty of filth, grain, filth. Don't forget filth. And more filth to eat, the black rat quickly prospered. It doesn't go from rats and darkness to rats and death skulls. Oh, uh, well, uh, my script says rats and death skulls. You forgot the flea that rats didn't cause the plague. The flea caused the plague. The flea is the whole point. Uh, just give him the flea. <laughs> no, not that one. There it is. Ah, that's the skull. Xenopsilla chiapis, the rat flea. See, this guy here gave the plague to this guy here, a rat. Killing the rat. Once the flea senses the cold, dead rat, it prefers to find a warm, live rat. But if a human happens to come along, well... From 1347 to 1352, the plague, or Black Death, killed a third of the population of 14th century Europe. And just as many, if not more, rats. So, so what stopped the plague? No one really knows. Maybe soap, closed sewers, a change in temperature? Or some believe this guy. Radis norwegicus, the brown rat, better known as the Norway rat. 